Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney cautioned viewers who are tuning in to the House Select Committee's investigation of the January 6th inter interaction at the U.S. Capitol against being distracted by politics. Let's listen. I would urge all of those watching today to focus on the evidence the committee will present. Don't be distracted by politics. This is serious. We cannot let America become a nation of conspiracy theories and thug violence. Cheney, who is only one of two Republicans on the select committee and a fierce critic of Donald Trump, finds herself more alienated from the GOP as she fights for re-election in her home state of Wyoming, where she's had to turn to Democratic and independent voters for survival. Hmm. Here to discuss Cheney's fate and her potential appeal to Democratic voters are Rebecca Azur, journalist and co-host of Like It or Not, Amy Tarkanian, political strategist and former Nevada GOP chairwoman. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Thank you. All right, Amy, I I've seen a lot of Democrats being really enthusiastic about Liz Cheney. How are Republicans feeling right now? <laughs> the complete opposite. They find her to be a nuisance, and I think she's probably going to end up losing her seat. In, 20, um, in 2020, she actually won her position, I think by roughly 40%, which is really impressive, but polls are actually showing her now down by more than 30% to uh, Harriet Hagerman. And Harriet actually, which is interesting, was originally a Ted Cruz supporter in 2016, hmm. but now has the endorsement of President Trump. So I think Liz literally is banking on having crossover appeal. Uh, most likely, if she has Republican support, it's going to be Republicans who didn't support President Trump in the first place, because this January 6th uh, hearing, whatever you'd like to call it, because it's not really a hearing. There, there's no other opposing views that are allowed. Um, you, I think that's pretty much all she's going to get support wise. Yeah, we're trying to kind of figure out how much is the Republican Party still Trump's party. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can point to some signs, some of his, some candidates he's endorsed, for instance, doing well, uh, beating their their opponents like uh, like, you know, in the Ohio Senate uh, primary, Vance versus Mandel, um, Oz, very, very narrowly, just barely uh, Dr. Oz prevailing in Pennsylvania. At the same time, you know, he's. I think he's not he's not necessarily the so far out ahead if he's going to run uh, again. There's a, a flocking to DeSantis, for instance. Mm -hmm. But what there isn't is is a dedicated anti-Trump wing the, the, experiencing any success. You, you have to be you, you, you can't even really be neutral to Trump. You still have to be on board with Trump and with MAGA. You can be a different person, maybe. But I mean, that's what we're trying to figure out. What, what's your take on all this, Rebecca? Like, OK, so, you know, Cheney, um, Liz Cheney is Republican royalty, so it would be in her best benefit to uh, stick with Donald Trump. Right. If she wants to be reelected, if she wants the GOP party to continue to back her, it's almost like right now, if you speak against Donald Trump being in the Republican Party, uh, especially being at that level, but you you're. You're saying that you don't want to be a Republican. You don't go with Republican choices. You don't follow anything because Donald Trump is basically uh, the face of Republicans right now. Um, you know, even people still uh, calling him President Trump and he's former President Donald Trump, but they still see him in that light where he is still that big of a deal to the party. So listening and hearing uh, Cheney, uh, Liz Cheney, speak against him or denounce in this time is very interesting, especially since, you know, from 2017 to 2021, we've seen her back Trump positions. You know, 93% of the time she has supported Donald Trump, voted for Donald Trump. So now in this particular moment, hearing her speak against Donald Trump, denouncing him, uh, you know, it's uh, it's very interesting. But I think it'll, anybody who is wanting to stick Republican, stay Republican, should not uh, stray too far away from, um, you know, siding with Donald Trump. Well, and the other problem for Liz Cheney, Amy, is that she represents this older Republican Party, the Bush era Republican Party. Obviously, her dad is Dick Cheney, the former vice president, vice president under George W. Bush and a major advocate, uh, spokesperson, avatar of neoconservatism, of foreign policy interventionism, which is so out of fashion among 
obviously among the Republican base, but I, but it's never really been in fashion uh, with many, you know, very liberal Democrats or independent, independent minded Democrats. You know, you have people there are there are people who if she's trying to draw support from people outside the Republican base, I mean, she's going to a lot of a lot of those people you'd potentially need to get hate the Cheneys for and, and the Bushes and what went on in, in Iraq war that probably describes um, uh, us and a lot of our viewers. Uh, so there's, there's, you know, she, that's such a small, small group of people who are, you know, never Trump Republicans and and want to go back to Bush era foreign policy stuff. That's like that's like six people in the entire country, and then they don't they don't live in Wyoming. <laughs> no, they don't. But what's interesting about Wyoming is there's roughly a little under 200,000 registered Republicans versus 45,000 Democrats. So a primary win is a win. However, county by county, their rules are very interesting because uh, it's not uh, uniform statewide, but in certain areas, you can actually switch party affiliation back and forth. So this is going to be interesting to see actually how the votes do pan out. And I do think that if Democrats uh, want to vote for somebody maybe just out of spite of President Trump, then she'll, Liz Cheney will get those votes. But like I mentioned at the get-go, Liz is not going to get the real primary base Republican voters. She will mm. get those who are already anti-Trump and maybe uh, independents who just hadn't made up their mind or never really paid attention um, and, and are maybe more moderate leaning. Uh, you know, Liz, she very well could have kept her position if she just stayed out of the whole January 6th situation. When she says that this is this is important and it's it's not political, it is political. She has made this into political theater because when Speaker Pelosi decided to move forward with this committee and she did not allow the Republican choices, the real Republican choices of, of one of them being Jim Jordan and allowed both very, very vocal never Trumpers being Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney, we knew that this was going to be political theater from the get go. And that's exactly what it's been. And that's why I think the majority of Republicans are ready to move on from this. Nobody was thrilled with the way January 6th went down. But I think just like what other people are saying with, you know, the 2020 elections being stolen or Democrats still claiming 2016 elections were stolen, people are ready to, to fix things and move on. You know, I mean, I think I agree with you. I, I think that it would have frankly benefited uh, Democrats and would have been a lot more illuminating and true to what the mood of the country is if people who were still talking about Trump stealing the election and were kind of standing behind that version of history were able to make their case at these hearings and have to confront and have a real um, kind of adversarial process about the facts that are being elucidated. But I want to go back to you, uh, Rebecca, because you mentioned uh, rightly that Liz Cheney did vote with uh, Donald Trump 93% of the time. What do you make of this kind of uh, breathless, gratuitous praise that she's getting from the Democratic Party? Some people even suggesting that she should run for president on the Democratic ticket. I think it's dumb. Listen, I'll say this um, before we start with that. Uh, you know, when Democrats were saying that Donald Trump stole the election, they did not, you know, nobody gathered and rallied together to go and, you know, hijack the Capitol. Like, you know, people didn't die, nothing like that. Here is what we're looking at, that they're saying, you know, Trump didn't win. January 6th, we can't just get over what happened. That was something that was serious, okay? That was, you know, we saw domestic terrorism right before us. So it's not something that we can just sleep on and get over or whatever the case may be. Now, um, listening to Liz Cheney uh, move forward and speak and denounce Donald Trump, it's like almost like a little too late. I don't think it's giving, it's, it doesn't give me she needs to run on the presidential ticket because all of that time that she could have said something before, um, you know, uh, from 
Charlottesville, uh, that situation, she could have spoke up. We haven't heard anything from that. It's good to hear people from that side speaking up because that's what we would want, right? But it's not so major to say, oh, goodness, this needs to be somebody who needs to run for president. I think that's kind of the hype that goes through social media. Somebody does something good, something something that they should have been doing, and it's like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. This is so presidential, and it's really not. It's just this person finally being on you know, the right side of things or telling the truth about what happened and sticking up for America. You know what I'm saying? So that's all that is. It's not so special. It's not so extra. Mm. Well, Rebecca, Amy, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Thank you. And we'll be back with more Rising right after this.